glory. Is everybody there? Let's begin. I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. In other words, for something to be unclean, it has to be become unclean. Amen? It has to be a, a source of something that's unclean. Or you determine it, it's unclean. For some things, there may be something for you that's not unclean, but for someone else it is. You know, some people are on special diets. Amen? Some diabetics and stuff like that. So for them, some things are unclean to eat because it's harmful to them. But to others, it's not unclean. Then, of course, any abuse of anything is unclean. Amen? We can bring it into an unclean state. Hallelujah. But to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is what? Unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one whom Christ died. Therefore do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. But righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed have, are pure, but it is evil for the man who eats with offense. It is good neither to eat meat nor drink wine nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is his who does not condemn himself in what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not of faith is of what? Sin. These are three major elements of expressing the presence of freedom. You are to be free. The three expressions of freedom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. See, freedom is the presence. Freedom is the Spirit of God. That's why the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And freedom is trying to express always through me and you. There isn't anything greater than expressing freedom. People love to be around people that are free. But people who are bound, they don't want to be around. The people that are bound love to be around people that are bound so they can stay bound. And those spirits feed off of one another. They're bit okay. Keeping all things in the sight of the, to be heaven bound. You know, we have to keep that in sight of the price that Jesus paid for us. Not allowing flawed judgments to seal someone else's peace. See, in other words, because what you're approving doesn't mean somebody else is approving. What you're accepting doesn't mean what somebody else is accepting. What he's saying, put all of these things aside and be considerate to one another. Don't be a stumbling block to one another. Amen. Why? Because God wants to express his presence through the expression of your freedom. In other words, you are free to do all things, but according to the way that God says it. We're not to be in any bondage of anything. But Paul said, you know, I'm free, but I'm not going to allow things to bring me under bondage. So we don't want to be under bondage of anything according to dress, according to anything. But there are limitations. Amen. In other words, we don't want to be a stumbling block to somebody. Amen. So in this, the freedom's expression is the area where God is trying to express his freedom through you. Somebody will know whether you're free or not. How, what's your attitude? What's your desires? What's coming out of your mouth? Let me tell you, the confidence that you carry will determine whether somebody you're free or not. Things that you approve will show whether you're free or not. Amen? And things that you disapprove. In other words, you, you and I will be known by fruits of things of approval and disapproval, clean and unclean. 
But that's why we're to judge ourselves. So that we can maintain a place and position of freedom. But it must be clean. It must be pure. And that song, the glory of God coming in here, what is it? So that God's presence can remove all the idols of our heart. Those idols are desires that are unclean. Selfish, self-centered. Those things are unclean. See, some things might not be sin, but they may be unclean. Does everybody understand that? Because it could be a stomach, but anything that's not done with faith is sin. Now, faith is being connected according to the way God wants it, not according to the way we want it. Is everybody okay? First Timothy chapter 4. Express, uh, freedom's expression is today's title. Freedom's expression. You know, but I thought freedom was sin, able to sin without getting caught. And I would do what I will. Satan's doctrine. So you and I were B.C. false freedom. <laughs> then we found out how bound we were when we got saved. Dear God, you know. And 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Again, remember the Spirit wants to express, God wants to express His freedom through us everywhere. No matter where we go, no matter what we do. Now the Spirit expressly says that in a later time, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. And we see that happening all over. These are deceiving spirits, doctrines of demons to steal your freedom or compromise it. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. And commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ nourished in the words of faith and of good doctrine which you have already carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' tales, fables, and exercise yourself toward godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having the promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity, and in freedom. Till I come, give attention to the reading, to the exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by the prophecy and with laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Again, deceiving spirits, doctrines of demons come to steal your freedom and replace it for bondage. There's a lot of false humility with religious acts of works <laughs> neglecting the presence of freedom. Does everybody understand? There's a lot of false humility out there. I mean, and when I've traveled in other countries and so forth and seen these false humilities, false religions, they have a form of religions. I mean, these, these sweet monks, I mean, these guys are sweet. They have a false humility, though. They believe what they believe. But it's wrong. It's wrong. It's devastating. And watching all these other people do these ritual acts, thinking that this is their form of expressing freedom. Trying to sway people into their way of life, and actually they're actually bringing them into a way of bondage. Because there is no indulgence it, there's no indulgence in the area to where people can get into the true presence of God because they put themselves self-centered. So they can't grasp God's presence. The only thing they can do is grasp the things of rituality, false, flawed perceptions. And they grasp these things to try and make themselves godly. 
But they can't. It doesn't work. Not in the eyes of God. There is not a freedom there. Look at if they got to wear, wear, I mean, I, when I was overseas, they wore these orange garments. I thought I was in prison. Because that's what they wear in some prisons, orange garments. These guys wear these orange things. All, they all shave their heads. All, they all look alike. They go through their fasting and their rituals and they're silent. And they have a form of godliness. But they got no power. I don't know what they do behind closed doors. I wouldn't even go there. In 2 Corinthians 3. Second Corinthians three. And then you've got all these other false religions and Buddha and this and that. I mean, hey, come on, we have one religion that worships a rock. We got another one that religion uh, uh, worships this big fat jolly statue demon. And they give it coffee and they uh, the, the other day I walked by one of them, they had change in it. I thought, oh, is this a donation? It's like, you know, when I was uh, in Cambodia, they were bringing flowers to these statues every day. I mean, they would give these beautiful flowers, like they were offering these flowers and so forth. And I mean, look at, uh, and, and then in India, man, their grandmother could be a cow. Far be it, they'd eat grandma. This is all false garbage, man. Man, but when I got, when I, we went into town that they they had, Fried everything. I'm literally fried everything. And they ate it like candy. I'm like, no way. I am not eating that roach nor that spider. I don't care what it's cooked in. Plus many other things I'm not even going to talk about. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can dress it up, but I couldn't eat it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Glory to God. But again, this is all there. Th 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 this is not freedom. This is bondage. Amen. You may be free to eat all you want, but man, you better be, be able to recover from what you eat. There are consequences. Amen. 2 Corinthians 3.12. That's why sometimes we got to say, no, that's unclean for me today. One big slice of pie sufficient. No, anything after that is unclean. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 12. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. You know, that, no, I always think about that. So Moses comes down with a bag on his head, you know. It would be the unknown uh, preacher, right? They wouldn't know. But it's like, you know what? How did he get around? How long? I wonder how long he left it on. You know, because he was so concerned about people seeing the glory uh, on his face. But he knew it would go away. So... For me, it's like, man, we, we desire God's glory. Amen? We want God's glory. You know, I always wonder if he poked two holes in there or something. You know, could he see where he was going or whatever? You know, but in this, the glory of God that was on him, I mean, he was with God for 40 days. He thought it was five minutes. Think about that. That man left that presence of God, <laughs> a new, I would say a new person. But that glory of freedom, you got to remember he was brought up in tradition. He was first brought up as an Egyptian and all the bondage is there. Although they had freedom of sin. They were freedom to sin. False gods and all kinds of other things brought into a bondage of rituals. Then goes out into the desert. Meets the Lord. Hangs out there for 40 years or whatever. And becomes a brand new creation. He became free, but yet there were still ritualistic arenas and things that he had to do to maintain freedom. They still had to sacrifice. They had to do all the things. But see, this is where Jesus set it all apart for me and you. 
We have more, we are a generation of freedom more than any other generation it ever was. But yet we, so many people take it for granted. They misuse it. They play with it, not realizing they're actually diminishing their freedom and picking up more and more bondage. It says, verse 14, but their minds were blinded for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because a veil is taken away in, in Christ, in the, new, in the anointing. Amen? But even to this day when Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts or on their minds also. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, that veil is removed. Now, the Lord is the what? It's the Spirit. So many times people have that hard problem. They, have, they, they can't comprehend that the Holy Spirit is the Lord. They're one. Amen? Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or there is freedom. Freedom. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Again, the Lord is the Spirit. Where He re resides brings freedom. And when He leads, it maintains our freedom. When we allow Him to lead, it maintains our freedom. Because freedom desires to express Himself through His temples. I'm going to say this again. Freedom, because freedom is the Lord, desires to express Himself through his temples to bring glory to the name of Jesus. And everything is done. So freedom's expression is always trying to express himself through us. In Psalm 16 and verse 7. That's why the Lord says you'll know them by the fruit. I'm going to tell you one of the simplest, easiest ways I find out whether people are free or not. Worship. When people can't worship, I mean, if they're not expressive in worship, man, they ain't free. They're not free. Because they're not filled enough. Worship is the greatest expression to determine where somebody's free or not. Amen? And then after they worship, you'll really know. Hallelujah. Psalm 16, 7. Speak it. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. And let me ask you this. If you truly set the Lord before you every day, will you be free? Yes. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Moved to what? Exchange my freedom for bondage. Therefore, my heart is what? Glad. And my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in hell, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life, and in your presence is what? Fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Man, the joy of the Lord is our strength, and in his presence is fullness of joy. Again, it goes back to that. Freedom is always expressing. Somebody that's miserable, they're lacking something. They got bit by bondage. Amen? Again, we should be joyful all the time, no matter what. We should stay filled, spirit of God, stay drunk, don't matter. I mean, we tried to do it when we were in the world. I mean, think about it. Everybody tried to get high in the world. They went from bar to drugs to whatever and whatever, always looking for a temporary false fulfillment and never being fulfilled. Just working to every Friday and hoping to make it to work on Monday. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Fullness of freedom is to be 
when you are filled with the freedom, there's a fullness of freedom, and it's ex always trying to ex express himself. There's an overflowing that you can't even contain it. You just want to bust. Yeah! You know? Psalm 89. Glory! Every once in a while. You're releasing because you're overflowing. Now I have these propane tanks on the side of my house. And they were filled. And because I guess the sun was on them, all of a sudden we heard... I think, whoa, the explosion. But it was just a relief veil. But you know what was happening? It was overfilled. That's how we should be. We should be like human whistles. You! It's glory. You know, freaking people out all around you. Standing in the law in the in the in the gross of the register line, ready to, ready to check out. Glory! Boom! Everybody's freaked out. What happened to you? I'm filled. I'm joyful. You want some? Let me lay hands on you. You heathen. Psalm 89. Is that where we're going? Glory. I mean, that's what they do in heaven. Everyone walks around. Glory. They can't even get a conversation in. Hey, what are you doing? Glory. Verse 14. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your name they rejoice all day long. And in your righteousness, they are exalted. For you are the glory of their strength. And in your favor, our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord and our king to the Holy One of Israel. <laughs> the light of his countenance is upon his people expressing freedom. 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 Man, we should be so free and expressing freedom wherever you go. People know. People know there's something about you. Man, because you're always joyful. You're releasing. I go into places and they tell me of certain things. Man, we know when you're here. I mean, it's awesome. But you got to stay filled. You got to get connected. You got to cross over. And then you got to maintain it. Amen? You got to be careful and determined because... You don't want to touch things that are unclean. And you don't want to agree with things that are unclean because it will begin to diminish that freedom. And next thing you'll be touching things that are bondage. Everything of your past is bondage. Amen? God is always trying to free us to keep us going. Remember, this is a temporary place, not an eternal place. Everything is temporary here. So when things are going wrong, who cares? It ain't going to last long because I ain't going to be here forever. No matter what's going on, it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep joy, peace, express the righteousness of God, agree with the things that are pleasing to God, and disagree with the things that are displeasing to God. Amen? Galatians 5. Glory. Woohoo! What did the Marines say? Anybody remember? They, oh, I don't know. What now there's a, how you, or, oorah. That's what a Marine says, oorah. A Christian should say, glory. Amen? Then they know you're in the army. You're in the Lord's military. What are you doing? Glory. You can you hoorah or whatever you want. We're dressed in powerful with the armor of God. We're, we're loaded with Holy Ghost bazookas and we got everything. All of heaven is behind us. And we got over 2,000 angels working on our behalf and one of them can kill 175,000 people. Why are believers freaking out? 
because the reality is not there to them. When you don't cross over enough, you step in, out of the true reality into a false reality. Now you're self-centered. Oh, yes, I know God. No, you used to. Maybe. Galatians 5, verse 1. Let's speak it out. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be what? Entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you are become circumcised, Christ will profit you what? Nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You who have tend to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision or uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. See, people are trying to increase their uh, religion, holiness, and everything else. Remember, there's, there's so many denominations that are promoting a name. Except for, the name, you know, we want to promote the name of Christ. I mean, you have the Baptists, you have the Catholics, you have the Presbyterians, you have the Protestants, you have all of these things that are organizations that are promoting an event or some part in the Scripture that has to do with uh, an event or, or anything else of John the Baptist or whatever instead of the freedom. That's why we are Christians. We don't promote any, anything that's trying to better itself and become more religious. We promote freedom. Jesus came to bring us free. He came to free us from the law of traditions of men. He came to bring us free from our past. He came to us to bring freedom from ourselves. Amen? And be born again in the Spirit. No longer living from the past, but from the future. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying that these denominations are bad. Amen? I'm just sharing that people are trying to improve what God has already done. They're trying to bring more of a freedom. Well, if you follow us, you'll be freer. No, if you follow, no, if you follow Jesus, you'll be freer. Amen? That's what it's about. If you follow Jesus, if you're led by the Spirit of God, you're free. Because there's a lot of Jesus things going on, but they're not free. See, a lot of people are following cultures or doctrines, but not the true doctrine. Jesus always promoted the Father through the Spirit. Always. And what did he tell him? He said, man, it's to your benefit that I leave. Why? Because I'm going to leave you my presence. I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit who will guide you, lead you, and tell you all truth and things to come, and he will prevent you from being bound if you'll be led by him. If you'll just let yourself be led and learn his language, learn his presence, learn his unction. See, people are so busy, they're not willing to take the time to learn. No, they know the scriptures, but they still haven't learned the Holy Spirit yet. That's where Jesus said, look, at they've not learned Christ. Not learned what? The anointing, the leading, the unctioning. Oh, they know the scriptures, they can quote them, but they're not free. Because only those who are led by the Spirit of God are free. Amen? Hallelujah? Glory to God. All right. Where were we? Uh, in verse 16, let's go there for a second. I say that walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh, which is bondage. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law of bondage. Now the works of the flesh that are works of bondage are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, and revelries, and anything that's like that. It's unclean. It's bondage. Amen? And just as I told you in time past, that those who practice these things, if a person, if it's a part of their life and they're still practicing these things, obviously know that they are not free. Amen? 
And he says that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passion and desires. This does not mean because you become a new a believer. This is because you are filled with the Spirit. You're being led by the Spirit. Amen. These are Christ. Then you're able to what? Have the flesh crucified, its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one or another, or envying one another. See, in this, he's talking about religious works of bondage, which are false expressions. And they're deceptive. Works of the flesh are bondage expressions. In the presence of the spirits of bondage itself. In Romans 8. Freedom is expression. Romans 8, 12. I really believe that the Spirit is releasing this as a reminder because so many people are going back into bondage. They're not expressing freedom. They're expressing bondage. So in some areas of their life, they're expressing freedom, but in many areas of their life, they're still expressing bondage. And eventually, that will contaminate the other part. It's amazing how many people have gone back to certain other things that have brought them in bondage. Amazing to me. And again, everything is a lack of God's presence. Everything. Confirmation. Everything's a lack of God's presence. Tell them, Dad. <laughs> Romans 8, 12. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors or bound to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will what? Live. So whose responsibility is it to put to death the deeds of the body? Ours. That's the flesh. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption to whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Listen, the devil knows doctrine. He knows how to manipulate and bring people back into bondage. That's what he did through the whole world. I've never seen the world go into bondage so quickly. All at once, the whole globe went into bondage instantly. It took a couple weeks. The whole world was under bondage, under control, under house arrest. Businesses shut down. Couldn't fellowship, couldn't get in God's presence. They were doing everything they could. Then when they begin to let them out a little bit, they said, mask yourself. Everything is to prevent fellowship face to face. You didn't know where people sticking their tongue out at you or you didn't know. I mean, half of the time I said, what? I couldn't understand them. I'd be checking out at the register and and they got the glass between them. They got rubber gloves on and they got a mask on. They want me to interpret what they're saying. I mean, so many times it's like, man, can you just. And then they get so close to the thing, you know. Anyways. It's just incredible to me in how the enemy infiltrated our, every area so quickly. And I really believe that it was a rehearsal for taking the mark. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to take the mark, thinking it's okay. They'll deny Jesus. It's a simple thing. For them, it'll be simple. To deny Jesus. Oh, I don't care. I'll deny Jesus. I'll give, me, give me the cash. Give me this. Give me that. Give me the stimulus. I'll take the mark. Why? So I can eat and take care of my family. And not realizing that they just sold their souls. It's that simple. You know, so many times we see all these movies and revelations, whatever. You're going to take the mark or die. It's not going to be that way. I'm not saying in all circumstances. Most of the time it will be an area of survival and, and deception. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception. Everything is to take our freedom. 
and put people back into bondage. And what does he use the, the greatest is power. <laughs> he uses the power of fear. Fear. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? Uh, verse, uh, verse 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God and of children, then the heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. False promises of freedom. <laughs> expressing freedom. <laughs> As for me and you, we should be expressing freedom and not, a, not bondage. Amen. The moment bondage begins to be expressed, I mean, we bring ourselves in our own bondage, especially by our words. And you hang around with someone long enough, you don't know whether they're in bondage or not. Grumblers, complainers, you know, things to that degree. Always self-centeredness, they're in bondage. They're not free. People say, hey, how you doing today? I'm blessed. How you doing? Oh, I'm all right. Ooh. I tell that to the register all the time when I go through. And I'm at Lowe's quite a bit of times, I'm telling you. I mean, they know me so well. They know my card and everything. I don't have to tell them what my number is or nothing. They, poof, they just put it in. But so I'm going through there, and I'm going, how are you doing today? I'm all right. I tell them, you're all right. That ain't good enough. I tell them right to their face, that's not good enough. What do you mean that's not good enough? Being all right isn't good enough. Why aren't you joyful? I know why. You lack God's presence. Being I'm all right is not good enough. Sometimes you got to go beyond blessed. I got to be blessed and highly favored, depending on how you feel. Amen? If you're feeling miserable, you better start speaking blessed and highly favored, prosperous, anointed, and everything. Why? Until it manifests. Hallelujah. Come on, give me a hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, glory. We're joyful. Hallelujah. Second Peter 2. You know, we've made many mistakes in our past that are still affecting us to this day. But it doesn't mean you have to be in a bondage with them. Amen? You can be severed and free. Just put them on the shelf. Let Jesus take care of them. Second Peter 2.18. You know, God will eventually take it off the shelf when he prepares you to take care of it. But so many people try to take care of it themselves. And you know, it does promote more bondage. Verse something, what did I say? 18. Let's speak. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness... They allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While well, they promise, why, now why did they get sucked back in? Lack of God's presence. While well, they promise them freedom or liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. You can't give what you don't have. For by whom a person is overcome by him, also is brought into what? Bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. Why? Because they come back seven times stronger. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog, which means demonized individual, returns to his own vomit, and a sow having washed to a wallowing in mire. Again, false promises of freedom, enticing souls with deceptive lies <laughs> of, a, of approval of self and man, but not of God's approval. Bringing individuals that were once allowed freedom to be expressed and carriers of heaven's the heavenly 
presence now brought into a bondage where now they're expressing sorrow, heaviness, discouragement, despair, s oppression, and blaming others for their, for their own stuff because not willing to take responsibility. I can't tell you how many people we have ministered to and talked to from the streets. And you know what? They want to go back to the streets because they don't want responsibility. So there was a guy who was driving down the road the other day, and there was a guy, and he's asking for help, need help. So I said, okay, what kind of help you need? I need money. All right, well, you don't look like you need money while you're smoking that cigar and everything else, you know. I said, what's going on? He goes, I'm disabled and I ran out of money. I'm thinking, well, why did you run out of money? Well, you know, this, again, because of not wanting to be accountable or responsible. If you're disabled, you know that he's collecting money. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that a lot of disabled people get enough money to even live. They have to find, a, you know, some other way of income or something or other assistance. But to be out there begging for money, if you can walk around on two legs, that self-entitlement, I mean, again, when a person is in need, I understand. The problem is, is they're not connected into a fellowship so they can get help. So that's one of the things I encourage them. Are you involved in any fellowship? Well, no. Well, why not? You're going to get help by people. The fellowship will help people. Get plugged in. Learn. Or you're going to get burned. You're not, it's not going to change. They'll be out there begging every week. And their life hasn't changed. But I offer them a place where they can learn and change their lives. I mean, if they need something to eat, whatever, and they haven't eaten in a while, man, I'll buy them something to eat. I'm not gonna, that's no big deal. But I'm not going to give somebody money to go out and buy cigarettes or dope. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? Praise be to God. God is good all the time. Let's go to Galatians 4. See, I was expressing my freedom, but he was expressing his bondage. And I was trying to share my freedom with him. But he rejected it. Because he didn't... See, they think that they're free by being irresponsible... And no accountability. Not realizing they're in more bondage than most people. I don't have to concern about anything. I just got to keep my tent up and get enough money to go to the liquor store. Nice life. Not a life. Galatians 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth his spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Why? Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those things which are nature, by nature, not God's. But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be what? In bondage. And we see this happening all, all look, he says, you observe days and months and seasons of years. In other words, they're worshiping those things. You know, so many people worship the day. 
um, uh, uh, of the Sabbath. They worship the Sabbath instead of the Lord of the Sabbath. And then they tell people, you're going to hell if you don't worship on Saturday. I mean, those are bondages. I'm free. I'll never forget after I got saved and I wanted to learn more. Man, I was so hungry and thirsty. I'm like, man, I got to get more. I was going to services every time the door was open. I was in the Bibles learning as much as I could. And I found out about this revelation course. I thought, God, I'm going. Well, it was, a, it was a course that was not led by the Spirit of God. And they had a, a picture of Jesus. It was another race. They had, I mean, all kinds of strange stuff. I mean, not saying that Jesus is, you know, for all races, but he was Jewish, you know. And uh, they kept saying all kinds of stuff that Revelation wasn't this, that. And they were worshiping, they were exalting Archangel Michael. And so I kept sharing with people, man, this ain't right, you know. So every time I raised my hand to ask a question, they wouldn't answer. answer. <laughs> I was like, yo, man, this ain't right. This is not led by the Spirit. I mean, even I knew that. And I was a baby in Christ. And I realized these people were in bondage. Why? By the error, by wrong doctrine. And they were promoting, and all these people were going. So I started my own class right after class. They would be coming out. I said, listen, you guys, this is wrong. I'm only here because I asked the Lord if I could come here. And he said, yes. And then when I wanted to leave, he said, no. He would not let me leave until uh, so, something happened, and then I was able to leave. But he kept me there for three weeks. And I said, no. He said, no. And I still was talking to everyone after. They, they wanted to throw me out so bad, but they wanted to hold their integrity. <laughs> but they were under bondage big time, man. And then finally, uh, the Lord said I could leave. And, and when I left, I, but I'll tell you, I learned. I learned about the false worship on Saturday. I learned about all of these things where these people were promoting. And they had a form of godliness, sweet people. And some of them really loved the Lord. But boy, they didn't like if you didn't agree with them. They didn't like that. But I learned a lot about bondage and freedom. I was so happy about being free. I was happy about knowing the truth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's grow a little further. Again, many today have departed from a loyal heart of freedom to a loyal heart of self. Believing the promotion of self <laughs> that brings bond. They actually bring the, they believe that the promotion of self brings freedom. Again, you'll know somebody through the expression of worship. Worship. It's amazing how many places I've gone to, no matter what denomination or what's what, You'll know because each one has its own level of worship. Where the, the level of worship will determine the level of freedom. Because more God's presence there, the more freedom is there. Of course, if you've got a bunch of people sitting around drinking coffee and eating cup and, and eating donuts while the worship's going on, you know ain't too much happening. Philippians 4. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord when? Oh, snap. Again, I say rejoice. And let your gentleness be what? Known to all men. In other words, let your freedom be known to all men. The Lord is what? At hand. But don't be anxious. Don't freak out. Be, you know, be anxious for what? Nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And let the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you have learned and received and have heard 
you saw me, these things do, and the God of peace will be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again through you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Again, freedom is expressed in your worship, praise, and bondage is expressed in your lack of it. <laughs> You know, many people, because of the lack of presence of God, become a reactor. Amen? Not a responder. Many seek but never find and maintain. They're easily swayed to the indulgence of the flesh and false hope of freedom. Many people offer freedom. Let me tell you, the enemy will send people from your past to try and bring you into bondage again. He'll send wealthy people to try and encourage you to become wealthy like they are, but they're fall in bondage. The enemy ain't stupid, but he can't outwit the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important for us to maintain being filled with the Spirit of God and connected. In James chapter 1, in verse 21, Let's speak it, please. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of freedom, the law of freedom, liberty, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If any of you uh, among you thinks that he's religious and doesn't bridle his tongue of bondage, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is what? Useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and keep oneself unspotted from, and keep one, and keep, and keep, and keep oneself unspotted from the world's influence. Mm. Law of liberty, words of liberation. Jesus gave us the words of liberation for us to be free. Amen. They were released by Jesus. And I'm going to close it Philippians 2. You know, it's pretty amazing. Jesus came, manifested word. What he released brought freedom to people. And his words went right into them. Now, what they release is bringing freedom to people. Because they're walking in freedom. There was no fear. Philippians 2.12, we'll close here. Glory. Thank you, Master. Oh, happy days. Philippians 2 and verse 12. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God. Without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Let your light shine. Let your freedom be expressed. Amen? Remember, freedom is the presence of the Holy Spirit. He's trying to express himself in every area through you. Your joy, your peace, and your righteousness will be an expression of the spirit of freedom in everywhere you go. People will want to have what you want. Amen? Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed, and we thank you for the price you paid that we can walk in freedom. So, Holy Spirit, we ask you to continue to guide us in peace, joy, and righteousness. Continue to fill us and keep us connected. Refresh us, renew us, empower us, 
and seal us that we may be about your business in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen.